Today we're going to be looking at my entire mallet collection. We are at 193 pairs in the collection. Whew. Okay, this is all 193 pairs of mallets, sticks, and pretty much anything else that looks like a mallet. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very special Christmas episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. Today we're going to be looking at my entire mallet collection at the end of 2019. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Mallet Lab, Bradley Crowley, Greg Harris, Dom's Dominic Chung, DMP Newberger, and Scott Rader. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Jeff Grafton. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash untan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show. Once again, I hope you've been well. And yes, it's time for some mallet action. Since this show started three years ago, we've received a whole bunch of stuff into the show, including mallets, instruments like marimba, vibraphone, all kinds of stuff. And the mallet collection is slowly building up and getting bigger and bigger. And I thought this year we would crack the 200 pair mark, but alas, we are just short. We are at 193 pairs in the collection. But in any case, in today's video, we're going to go through all 193 pairs of my collection, starting from the very top and going all the way to the very bottom. And it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a crazy task. But it's totally worth it because it was for you guys and I hope you guys will enjoy this total weird flex but okay moment. <laughs> now before I dive into the collection, please allow me to answer some questions. Are you going to sell or give away any of these mallets? Well firstly, in terms of selling, definitely not going to sell any of the mallets, especially not the samples because selling samples is very disingenuous. I feel like if a product is sent to you for free and you go ahead and sell it, it's a bit in terms of giving away, I'm probably not going to give away any of these mallets just yet because I want the collection to build. It's also kind of my job to have a big mallet collection. So maybe when it gets a little bit bigger, I might start giving away some of the duplicates and that will be really fun. How much is the collection worth? 9,000 plus US dollars. <laughs> that is definitely not a realistic value. I would value it more at... 5,000 maybe, even less than 5,000 US dollars because mallets as a whole just don't hold value. Like if you've ever seen people selling secondhand mallets, they almost never sell for more than say 30 to 40% of the original price. So don't expect too much. What's my favorite mallet in the collection? Right now, in this point in time, my favorite mallets are the Pius Chern Graduated Series. I did actually buy these mallets. You'll see them in the collection later. And yeah, other than that, I really have a very open-minded taste when it comes to mallets. What's my least favorite mallet in the collection? Mm. How long did it take you to build this collection? I've only started collecting samples since the studio show started in 2016. So maybe three years. It took me about three years to get it from 20 pairs to about 193 pairs. <laughs> oh. Why do you like to collect mallets? I know for most people who collect items, it's not for any economical reason. It's not because it makes sense to collect these things. It's because it's an enjoyable process. And for me, all of the mallets that I have carry a story to them. In fact, some of the mallets in this collection are now historical. They've been discontinued. And I just love that about mallets. Like just a simple piece of stick with some yarn on it can tell so much about a person or an event or something. So that's why I like to collect them. All right, so I hope that answers your questions about the collection, but if you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. So without any further ado, let's get into the collection. Okay, this is all 193 pairs of mallets, sticks, and pretty much anything else that looks like a mallet or a stick. You can see I've arranged them on the floor of my studio in five rows, and this is the only way I could do it because there's just so many of them. So the top three rows are all marimba mallets, and you can see at the top there, that is mostly more expensive mallets, A to B tier, and including some of the second row as well. And the third row is more of the mallets that I'm using less often, and yeah, that's no other way to describe it. No special way of organization, I just thought, it was logical. <laughs> the left-hand side of the third row is all vibe mallets, and then this is all like xylophone, glockenspiel, that kind of stuff. And then we have some miscellaneous mallets over here. We have timpani mallets over here, and then we have some sticks. So you can see I don't really have that many of non-marimba mallets. 
I think mostly 75% of the collection is marimba mallets. And then this bottom row over here, which you can see, is also marimba mallets, but they're all in packets. This is what I like to call my dead stock collection. Some of them are duplicates of the ones above, like some of the companies have been very, very generous and sent me a lot of sets of the same mallet series. And some of them like these have only just come into the studio a couple of weeks ago. They're brand new, they haven't been reviewed yet, so I keep them in the packets. But yeah, we're gonna get started with this collection. I'm gonna go through every single series and what it is, when I got it, all that kind of stuff, so here goes. Okay, starting with the start of the first row over here, we have these innovative percussion mallets, starting with the Wei Chen Lin series, which I just made a video about. It's also the mallets that we're gonna give away. We're gonna be giving away a whole set of this series, all six pairs at the end of this year, so. Make sure you enter that giveaway if you haven't already. This is still my favorite mallet release of 2019 because of that color and the sound is just great. And I really have to congratulate Wei Chen once again on releasing this series. It is just awesome. I would actually put these into my 2020 rotation if they were on Birch, but they're on Rattan because at the time of them sending this, there was no such thing as a Birch version of this series. There is now, so hopefully I can get a Birch one soon. Next to the Wei Chen series, we have six pairs of the Casey Cangelosi series. There's some more in packets, but these are the opened ones, and I have reviewed these on the show as well. These were actually the first innovative percussion mallets I received on the show, thanks to Casey as well for hooking that up. It's a really cool series, the heads are really big, it's a little bit weighty, and you get an articulate sound, which is very much Casey's style. I don't personally use this series that much because it doesn't really suit my kind of sound, but I know a lot of people that this series would be suitable for. Next up I have the Yamaha Keiko Abe series. This is still one of the most popular mallet series in the world. I've got three pairs of them, and these are actually a retail set. I didn't get them sent from Yamaha, I'm not that good. <laughs> Bought these from JPC, Japan Percussion Center in Tokyo in 2018. That was after we met Keiko Abe. It was so cool meeting Keiko Abe. And yeah, these mallets retailed for about 6,400 yen which is about 70 US dollars. So not the cheapest mallets in the world. I did use them a little bit, even though they are on rattan. Why didn't I get the birch one? I don't know. I think the birch just isn't as good and it's just iconic. Like you have to get Keiko Abe's in rattan. It doesn't make sense for it to be in birch. Next up, we start off the Marimba One lineup with six pairs of Marimba One Double Helixes. Now the Double Helix series was the very first series to have this wavy pattern, this literally double helix pattern. And I remember when they first came out, everybody wanted to get a set of these because they look so unique compared to all the you know, plain style of mallets. This is like a really unique colorway, unique design. We've got the six, five, four, three, two, and one. As you probably know from my show, Marimba One sent me this entire series and they're okay. Like I know these are really popular, but they're not my favorite mallet because they're not weight matched very well. Like on my double helix review, I actually weight tested all of these mallets and a lot of them were different weights between the same pair, if that makes sense. So like for example, this one is actually lighter or heavier than this one, even though they came from the same pair. So that's a bit of a QC issue and an issue that kind of plagues a lot of earlier model Marimba One mallets. Next to the double helixes, we have the seven pairs of Katazina Mishka mallets, which look very similar to the double helixes. The only difference is you can see the heads are more diamond shaped, so they are warmer and they are also a lot heavier than the double helixes. And I know a lot of European players like this series. I'm okay with it. I think it's one of Marimba One's better series in the sense that you can actually use it for proper performances like concerts, competitions, things like that. I do think seven models is a bit excessive. I usually put the cap at six because at this point, you know, some of these models are very, very similar to each other. And this mallet series is quite expensive as well. It's one of the most expensive series from Marimba One. Of course, the most expensive one is coming up over that way. Just like the double helixes, I got these mallets sent to me pretty early on, I think 2016 or 17. Next to the Katazina Mishkas, we have the Lin Vartan series, which is this red and black and gray series. It's only four models in it. And it's one of my favorite looking Marimba One series because it looks very dynamic and very different compared to the others, which are all very sort of muted colors. You know, you've got the reds, the blues, the greens, and then this one's just like red and gray. It's very, I don't know, Iron Man chic, I guess. Now, personally, I don't really use these mallets that much because they kind of have a very dotty sound to them. You can see the heads are quite a lot smaller than some of the more warm Marimba One models and they tend to have a very articulate sound profile. But if you're looking for that articulate sound profile in something that is relatively light and easy to use, 
The Lin Vartan's not too bad. Next to the Lin Vartan's we have the Watermelon Mallets, which are of course the Marimba One round sounds. Now Marimba One used to only have three models for the round sound as well because it's the cheapest one. It used to be just five, three and one, but now we have a two and a four as of 2018. And I have to say that this is still my favorite series for Marimba One. If I had to recommend any Marimba One mallet at any budget level, I'd still recommend the round sound. Why? Because you're getting about 85% to 90% of what all the other mallets in Marimba One's lineup do, but for a much more reasonable price. You know, I love Marimba One, but their mallet prices are really, really high for what you're getting. I just don't roll with that. Ah, yes, remember this old chestnut, the one and only Racing Red Wave Wraps. Yes, this is the series that ignited so much debate about Marimba mallets in my earlier days on this channel because the Marimba One Wave Wraps, as you know, are still one of the most expensive mallet series in the world. They were retailing for about almost 90 US dollars a pair, which is just ridiculous for a price of mallets. Um, granted, they are very, very cool mallets. They are very technologically advanced with this jet engine design, as you can see. Check this out. Whoa, look at that. And these were sent to me in 2016 by Marimba One. So they are the first generation wave wraps. There's a new series of wave wraps now since 2018 called the Wave Wrap X's, WWX. And I think they're gonna be a little bit more refined than these, because these ones, they're not bad, but they don't sound particularly amazing. Like they don't make me go, wow, this is so good. Instead, it's kind of just like, eh. I actually take these mallets along to performances where I'm playing stuff like background music or anything like that, where I just want something that will work every single time. Now for people who want something that's similar to the wave wraps, but don't want to pay close to 90 US dollars for them, this is the new series that came out in 2018. PASIC 2018 saw the release of the Beverly Johnston series. Now Beverly's been with Marimba One for quite a long time and it was really nice to actually meet her in person at PASIC and also see her own mallet series. Now I have reviewed this series on the show before. I do have to say they are very, very similar to the wave wraps. I mean, look at that jet engine design, almost exactly the same. I do have all four models, but they're all in different shafts. Some of them are rattan and some of them are birch and they're kind of all mixed together because these were the last ones I could get at the Marimba One store at PASIC. Good times. On to the second row now, and this is the Ivana Village series from Marimba One. This, if you guys remember, was not one of my favorite Marimba One mallets. In fact, I think it's my least favorite Marimba One mallet because it just, I don't know, I don't quite understand it. It's not really warm and it's not really articulate either. It's just kind of this, in the middle of the road sort of feel. And as with all the artist mallets, they're pretty expensive. So I would not like to invest that much money in a series that I don't really understand. And next to the Ivana Billages, we have these four mallets here, which are of course the Colin Curry series from Marimba One, also sent to me from Marimba One. Thank you very much for that. And these are a very unique series in the Marimba One lineup because they are light, super, super light compared to the other Marimba One mallets. Like I'm pretty sure all of these ones have weights inside the heads, some sort of metal disc, especially the heavy ones like this one and the Ivana Village series. But this Colin Curry series is pretty light and it's the only one that comes with a rubber mallet as one of the harnesses, which would be the hardest one. So you just have Colin Curry one, two, three, and four. And those of you who watched my show very early on, if you're from Singapore, you would have found the name of this mallet to be extremely hilarious. CCB. And now we're gonna to head towards this middle section here, which is all Malatec mallets. So these two pairs over here are of course the Malatec Late Night series, which is the practice mallet that got a lot of views on my channel. I think it was like 50K or something. In fact, it was so good that I got an apology from Lee Howard Stevens because the shafts on this batch are just not very good. And they were kind enough to send me some more, which you will see later on there in the last row over there. They're really good for practicing in like an apartment or any public place where you're near someone else's home and you want to keep the noise down. Dear Adam, on behalf of Lee Howard Stevens, please accept the enclosed replacement late night series mallets. And we apologize for the mallets you purchased and are grateful for the thorough and detailed review you and we would appreciate another mention of these mallets on the studio but understand if that's not possible well here it is <laughs> and there it is at the bottom of this invoice we have it compliments of lee howard stevens oh yeah but yes i did actually pay for these mallets at first from steve weiss music because i really wanted a pair of practice mallets so they're really cool now next to the late night series we have the lee howard stevens series the most iconic mallet series and one of the first multi-tone mallets ever on the market. And yes, this is a very popular series in America, especially this LS15, super, super popular. 
and it's just a really, really well-priced multi-tone mallet, if you don't mind the super soft yarn. And these are the LS, I think they are the LS1, yeah, LS1. LS1 is literally the softest mallet that I own. I've also got a couple of LS17Zs, which are somewhere in between. Now, next to the Lee Howard Stevens series, we have this entire line here of the one and only Keiko Kotoku series. Now, you can see some of my Keiko Kotokus have special tape on them. I think when I was going to tie one, I changed the tape to these fun washi tape colors, but some of them have nothing because they are still raw and haven't been used. Because Mike Bolter himself, back when Bolter mallets were still around, actually gave me this entire mallet series. He gave me 10 pairs, like there aren't even 10 harnesses, he just gave me 10 pairs because he was that nice. He gave them to me at my first PASIC in PASIC 2017. And yeah, it's really sad because this mallet series doesn't exist anymore. It's been used a lot by me in my earlier days, especially when I recorded Moon. Now over on this side, we have some of the more heavily used mallets in my collection. You can tell from the tapes, you can see I've got all different colors of tapes on some of these mallets. We've got some pink, some orange, some yellow, some white and some gray camo, which we'll get to in a second. But yes, these are the Encore mallets. So from Encore Mallets Inc. in Louisville, Texas. Still one of my favorite mallet companies because they have a very special warm sound to their mallets. We got over here the Nancy Zoltzman grad set. This is still one of the most popular grad sets you can buy on the market. And I actually bought this set from a retailer in Australia because I'd just come back from America from the intensive that I was doing. It was called Chosen Vale. And Nancy Zoltzman was one of the faculty there and she used this exact mallet series in this exact combination in her performance. They still have the old school engraving. They've got a couple of personal touches like this silver tape at the top, pink tape at the bottom. And yeah, these mallets were featured on the second episode of the studio, episode number two. So that was over three years ago, wow! And then next to that we have the Nanai Memura series from Encore. Now I've used this series a lot. It's one of my favorite series of all time in this collection. I use it to record Lotus. I use it to play in a lot of my concert performances. It's just a really nice warm series that's not too heavy, but gives you enough weight that you can achieve that sort of warm sound. We have the seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I don't really use the seven, it's really heavy, but it has a gorgeous lush bass sound. And then the six I do use, it's a very usable everyday sort of bass sound. The five, a bit more hard. The four is a medium, the three is a medium hard. I think I use these three the most. Still one of my top recommendations for anyone looking for warm, marimba mallets. So shout out to Encore Mallets for sending me these. Now anyone who's been following the mallet trends for the last year and a half will know these mallets. These are the Kana Amori series from Encore Mallets as well with that signature red color. And fun fact, some of my mallets actually have the wrong spelling like this one, Kana Omari. Huh? And that's because these were literally pulled off the PASIC display in PASIC 2018, thanks to Dan Litzler at Encore for helping me pull mallets off the shelf. <laughs> Next up we have a more recent acquisition. It is of course the Pious Cheung Mallet Series, which I just recently reviewed on the show. This is an innovative percussion mallet. And the reason why it's not included with the other innovative mallets is because I actually bought this set out of I don't know what it was, fear of missing out. <laughs> super, super nice mallet series. Not the cheapest in the world, but it's okay because this actually comes as a grad set, so it's not too bad. You can check out my review for more information. CustomMalletCreations.com Studio Signature Ice Blue Mallets. Like these, I think, are my favorite mallet that I reviewed in 2019. Absolute killer when it comes to value for money. The build quality is top notch. I don't think I've ever seen a mallet series with such decent shafts, like the shafts are just perfect. So perfect. And it just feels really, really premium for something that costs only about 30 bucks. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And tacked onto the end of the second row, we have my once favorite mallet series, which is of course, the Robert Van Syce series. Van Syce from Vic Firth, yes. This is so faded. I got these mallets in 2016 and I, I did buy them. And I used to really, really, really enjoy using them because they were so simple and so easy to use. They're super, super light. 
or as we would say on the old show, 50-50. <laughs> they're really good for first timers, they're really good for learning technique, and if you just want a predictable sound, you can't really go wrong. Okay, so now we move over to the third row of mallets, which is some of the more abstract marimba mallets, still all marimba mallets. And these two sets here will be very, very familiar to people who watch my show in the last year, because I was talking a lot about this brand until it recently just kind of disappeared. Yes, I'm talking about Zero Gravity Percussion. I don't know what happened to them. Everyone who keeps asking me what happened to them, I literally have no idea. But this is of course their Jupiter series that they once made that was received with very high praise. And then this is the Mars series, which is that really nice fireball design. I had a lot of hopes for these guys because their mallets sounded pretty good and they looked really, really amazing. But I don't know, something something along the line happened to the brand. My deep sympathies for anyone who still has an order with them that hasn't been delivered. Hmm. Now next is the Zero Gravity Mallets. We have the one and only Spaceship Flying Saucer Mallets, aka the Drew Tucker Groove Masters from Mike Bolter. Now these mallets obviously don't exist anymore. It's a super iconic design because it's so big. I mean, look how big it is. It's like bigger than my hand. <laughs> and yes, I was given these mallets by Drew Tucker himself. So shout out to Drew Tucker. But actually, since then, Drew Tucker has a new series, which is over there. I'll show you that in a second. But we will forever remember these as the spaceship mallets. Now next to Drew Tucker's mallets, we have a line of Salyers percussion mallets. Now Salyers, I was always looking to see what Salyers was like, and I have to say their mallets are not bad, but this series, this brown series, which is the Doug DeMauro series, is really strange. It's so fat, the heads actually give Drew's mallets a run for their money. I mean, look how big that is. <laughs> I've heard that Doug DeMauro is making his own mallet brand anyway, so maybe this mallet series doesn't exist anymore, but yeah, very, very interesting colorway. <laughs> very interesting. Next to that, we have the Salyers Earth Tone series. Now this was one of the most popular series in the American Midwest. I know a lot of people use these over there because they're pretty cheap and they're pretty decently built. It was unfortunate that my set actually came with some splinters. So that's why I've always been scared of using these since then. But I remember Salyers telling me that this is a one-off and that you can fix these splinters by sandpapering them. Moving along to these purple monsters, which are of course the one and only Inaki Sebastian MCS series. Now I used to use this series a lot when I was in university because everyone in Australia had this obsession with Inaki Sebastian mallets. I don't know who started it, but yeah, since then Inaki has grown up a lot. I think the brand is a lot more established now. It's called Elite Mallets and they have a shop called Perky Shop and their mallets are looking and feeling a lot better since these. Okay, in between the Inakis, we have the Artifact Percussion Mikata Shaft Mallets. Now, these shafts are made from the same material as knife handles, so they feel very, very much like a hybrid between rattan and birch. Very, very cool. And the mallets themselves sound pretty good. In fact, I actually lent my Artifact Percussion Marimba Mallets to my student and she really likes them. So shout out to Artifact. Thank you for sending me these quite early on in my show. Next up we have the money bags or the tofus, <laughs> as I like to call them. These mallets are unlike anything else in this collection because as you can clearly see, they have no yarn and they are super, super well-built mallets. Yes, these mallets are from Dragonfly Percussion and I reviewed the first generation Dragonfly Percussion Marimba mallets. They were used by my friend Jordan, who now lives in Boston. Shout out to Jordan really like that guy but yes these mallets were one of the cheapest mallets you could get for the price and they are very unique with this very hessian sack sort of pattern they obviously don't wear out very easily they sound super articulate they're super fun and yeah shout out to dragonfly for being one of the first companies to send me stuff on this show all the way back in 2017. next up we have these mallets which were actually homemade mallets by a girl named anastasia da silva I remember she was selling these mallets to people at Mallet Lab and she'd made them by hand and they just look really, really cool and they actually sound pretty decent too. These are a really, really cool uh, homemade mallet series. So, really nice. Next up we have this series which doesn't exist anymore. It's been discontinued since last year because of a certain incident that happened uh, with this person but I was able to get these mallets before that happened. In fact, they were one of the first mallets I bought in my honors year of university, 2015. Obviously, I don't use them anymore because of um, 
obvious reasons. <laughs> Next to that, I have two pairs of one of the other mallets I bought in my fourth year of study at university in 2015 called the Mike Bolter 84B Contemporaries. Now, I reviewed these very early on in the show as a value mallet, and unfortunately, Mike Bolter mallets doesn't exist anymore, so I don't know if these mallets still exist, but they were pretty decent. But yeah, Mike Bolter is known for making budget mallets, and I think it fulfilled that purpose very, very well. At the end of the third row, we have these mallets, which are none other than the Zenith Pros. They were made by a kid called Zach, who I met at PASIC 2017. You know, all these homemade and independent brands be making shafts better than the big four. Hoi hoi! Okay, so now we're up to the fourth row of mallets. And yes, these are mostly vibraphone mallets. You've seen all of the Marimba mallets already. This is the old Tony Miscelli vibraphone series back when Mike Bolter still existed. I really love this rainbow color. Now, fun fact, these ones, which are the normal Tony Miscellis from Mike Bolter, the 46Rs, which were then renamed to the TM1s before Mike Bolter changed hands. This mallet series I bought in 2015 as one of my recital vibraphone mallets. Never gonna regret it, it's still one of my favorite mallet series. Over here we have the TM2s, the newer version, the final version before Mike Bolter changed hands. And fun fact, Tony Miscelli himself actually sent me these mallets. I don't really use the TM2s that much. I do use the original 46Rs still because they're just a really awesome mallet and they just look really, really cool. Next along the line, we have the Gary Burton M25s, which are just a really versatile vibraphone mallet. I bought these in 2016 from a store in New York. I think it was called Sam Ash, Sam Ash Music Center or something. How do you say it? Too much contact noise. I think that's Gary's style. He likes to have that contact sort of thing. And then over here, we have a really gross looking tape because these are my oldest mallets. I think I got these in 2013. That was six years ago. Of course, these are the Mike Bolter 23Rs, aka Bolter Blues, man. People in Australia used to obsess over these mallets. I don't know why. I mean, they're good, but they're not all-purpose mallets. They're not marimba mallets, but we were always told, oh, use them on both marimba and vibraphone. Next to that, we have these two blue mallets over here, which are the Artifact Percussion Vibraphone Mallet Series. Now, these uh, really fun vibe mallets. They're not too expensive. I really enjoy them. Next to that, we have three pairs of mallets here from Malatech, which are the Stefan Harris series, AKA the All Bright. They have super short handles. I haven't really had the chance to use these because I don't have a vibraphone, but if I ever get a vibraphone back in the studio again, I'll be sure to try these out. These are really, really cute mallets. And Lee Howard Stevens himself actually gave me these at PASIC 2018. We have these other colorful vibraphone mallets and you might think they look very familiar. Well, yes, they are the Dragonfly Percussion vibraphone mallets. And I did do a review on these ones. They're really, really nice. I really like that the shafts are like super, super thin. Look at that. And they're really nice for contemporary music because they're small and they have that really dotty sound profile to get those really high pitched sounds. Okay, so that's all the vibe mallets. And then here we have just some mallets that I really have not much expertise in. As you guys know, I'm not an orchestral player. I don't play Glock or xylophone very, very often. So I don't have many of those mallets. Here is the Vic Firth M132. I think I bought these from a store in New York which sold drum kits. I don't know what it's called, but it's near Times Square. So if you're from New York, you can let me know down in the comments where that is. This is the Mike Walter X4. It's a xylophone mallet with a soft rubber head. Really, really fun xylophone mallet. It's also shorter than you would expect. And then this one is the GP1 from Mike Bolter. Also super, super short. It's literally the length of like a pen. Okay, maybe a bit longer, but still, just a really fun, short Glock mallet. And guess who gave me these two? Yes, Mike Bolter himself at PASIC 2017. Never forget. Saito 104s. I think the only reason why I bought this was because they were on sale. <laughs> I've barely used them. I use them for like one excerpt class. And next to that, we have the Bolter Basics BB10. I used to have a lot of Bolter Basics mallets, but after a while, the Bolter Basics mallets just kind of feel limiting. So this is the only one I have left. I got rid of the Bolter Basic Marimba mallets that I had. Don't know where they've gone, rest in peace. <laughs> next up, we have these two yellow mallets, and these are some very, very expensive rubber mallets. They're the Massa. M1s with fiberglass shaft. And these, oh, just, 
I don't really like them at all. This shaft edge is so sharp. It's literally just a piece of fiberglass that they've cut right here and it just cuts into your hand. So annoying. Jackson and I bought these mallets because we needed them for music for 18 musicians, Steve Reich. Um, and obviously Steve Reich music has very clear marimba sounds. Since then, I haven't used them at all for obvious reasons. They just don't sound good for normal marimba playing. Next up, we have an assortment of Encore mallets, latex mallets. These are all from the original natural latex series from Encore, which is actually, if you look at these heads, they're actually what's underneath the normal Encore mallets. So all the ones like the Nanai Memora series, the Kana Amori series, they all have these heads underneath which kind of look a little bit like, I don't know, anyone who likes dim sum, this kind of looks like a haga. <laughs> really, really cool world percussion mallets. Unfortunately, I haven't really had a chance to review these because they don't particularly sound good on my instrument, but they sound really good on those world percussion type marimbas like balafon. Okay, so now we have some timpani mallets. And as you can see, I have very few timpani mallets, if any, like three pairs that are all super worn out and gross. That's because I barely play any timpani, but when I did, back in university, I used the T1 Generals from Big Fef and the T4 Staccatos. I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert on timpani. I don't know much at all. I don't even think I can play it very well. And then I've got these Billy Hyde mallets. Billy Hyde is an old music store that used to exist in Perth. Doesn't exist anymore, but these were like 10 bucks at the time. Super cheap. They were my first ever timpani mallets in high school. Yes, so that's why I hold on to them because they're just, precious historical moments. Okay, next up over here, we have a whole bunch of drumsticks and associated sticks in general. These are Yamaha timpani mallets. Now, technically they're timpani mallets, but they have a wood head. I actually use them for Zanarkis <laughs> for playing Po. Next to that, I have these swizzles because you're not a percussionist unless you have a pair of swizzles. <laughs> Everyone needs a pair of swizzles, which is one end drumstick, one end multi-percussion mallet. Next up we have this Lerny 140SH standard, which is a more recent acquisition from Japan. It's made in Japan and it's the stick of Uverworld drummer Shintaro. I love Uverworld. I absolutely love Uverworld's music. I know a lot of the lyrics to their songs. Just a really cool J-pop, sorry not J-pop, J-rock band. And yeah, these sticks were available in JPC, in Japan Percussion Center. And I don't think you're ever gonna see Uverworld sticks anywhere else in the world, so I just had to get them. Next up, we have one of the most common university audition sticks. They're none other than the Cooperman Ones from, um, well, Cooperman. <laughs> These are, of course, the very famous Graham C. Johns model made of persimmon wood. And I actually got to meet the guy who makes Cooperman at Chosen Vale. And it was just a really big Cooperman fest at that intensive, so yeah. Expensive sticks that I don't really use that much anymore, but they're there if I ever need them. I have this very generic pair of sticks from high school, which I found on the floor of a practice room and I just never gave them to anybody. So whoever owns these sticks, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I've had them for, yes, almost eight years. These sticks are eight years old. And it's just nice to have some sticks that you don't feel bad beating up. Next up, I have these roots from my teacher, Tim White. You can see his name is engraved there. He actually gave us all these roots to take home because he had some spare roots and we used them for a performance. I think it was for Samba or something like that. Next up, we have the one, the only SD1 General. Now this pair of SD1 Generals with the new text actually came with my drum kit that's in my studio. I bought a drum kit secondhand for teaching students and this literally just came in the bag with that drum kit. They were like, oh, we found these sticks and they're so new. They have barely any marks on them. I think these marks are from me. Next up, we have the stick that you've seen on my show many, many times. It's the first ever drumstick I owned. It's the Vic Firth SD2 Boleros. Yes, I owned these sticks in 2007. That was, wow, that's like 12 years ago. So these sticks are almost teenager age. The SD1s, these are a more recent acquisition, 2015, I think. I bought these just because the SD2 Boleros are a little bit thin and the SD1 Generals are a bit thicker. But yes, I did use these ones a lot. These sticks, which are an even more recent acquisition from Hong Kong. As you can see, they have Hong Kong International Drama Festival written on them. It's from a brand called Soundwave Master, which I believe is a brand based in Hong Kong. It says, we only select 15% of the finest wood from each 
badge. <laughs> I think I was meant to say batch. But yes, in any case, these sticks are actually from my friend Sator, who lives in Hong Kong. He's a former Disneyland drummer. He's a professional drum kit player. He also teaches drum kit in Hong Kong. He's an absolute beast. And he just came out with these sticks this year in 2019. And he gave me a pair as a gift when I was there in February. So thank you so much to Sato for these. They're too precious to use. So I will just keep them as a gift. And yes, don't ask me why there is a single Steve Gadd brush in this collection. I think I had a pair originally, but one of them broke. So now I only have one. That is so stupid. Okay. We're at the final row now of the collection. That's all the mallets we've gone through already. And this is all of the dead stock pile. And as you can see, all the mallets are still in their packaging because some of them are spares that the company sent me. Some of them send me just way too many pairs. And some of them have not been reviewed on the show yet. So I'm just keeping them in the bags for longevity. Concerto CN14s from Malatech, as well as the CN9s. I think this is like a very general Malatech series. More Lee Howard Stevens mallets. I think it's the 17Z, 17ZZ however you guys pronounce it. And we got some LS1s, extra LS1s. So two pairs LS1, two pairs LS17Z. Warren Wolf series. Warren Wolf is a pretty cool vibraphone player that I met at Mallet Lab. Four orange mallets, so you guessed it, it's four pairs of the Eric Samu series, which I did review on the show. Some people will really like his mallets. You will probably see these in certain competitions in Europe because obviously Samu music and Samu mallets tends to work quite well. Now over here we have six pairs of the Late Night series that just got sent to me as you saw in that letter earlier. They sent me a bunch to apologize for the build quality of the first pair. I mean, I'm, I'm not too fussed, so thank you anyway, Malatech. And then this set, which is the LN2, the gray one, which has Tony Miselli's name on it. It's a more articulate version of the LN1. I don't actually have these yet. So they sent me two pairs in Perch and two pairs in Rattan. I mean, Thank you so much, Maltech. That's really nice of you. Obviously, I don't play Rattan, so I'll probably just give them to Therese. Next to that, we have another series sent to me by my friends at Innovative Percussion. It's the Drew Tucker series. And as you can see, they have decreased in size considerably from the previous ones over there. I mean, look how much they stick out. Look at that. <laughs> They're literally just like, oi. We're spaceships. Yes, these mallets look like they'll be a much more refined version of Drew's original mallet, so I can't wait to check those out. And next to that, we also have something that, I don't know if you guys asked for this mallet. Um, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be, but Dan Moore Vibraphone Series. I don't know who Dan Moore is, but from what I've heard, he's supposed to be quite famous. So we have a pair of those to check out. And then over here, we have another would you believe it or not, full set of the KC Cangelosi series because Innovative Percussion sent me two pairs of every model. So I actually have 12 pairs of the KC Cangelosi series, which is a little bit overkill, but I ain't even mad. <laughs> and then on the end here, the final two pairs of mallets in this entire collection of mallets is a pair of Mike Bolter mallets. Now these mallets actually are very special because they represent my first ever competition. In 2018, you might remember, I actually took a competition called the Australian Marimba Competition. And unfortunately I didn't win, of course, but I did receive an award. It was called the Encouragement Award, which is basically like a side prize. And the side prize was these two mallets, the Mike Bolter 115Bs. Now these are obviously extremely basic mallets. You can see the yarn is very basic and I think they're more for student use, but I really appreciated it. And I always keep these mallets because they reminded me of that experience, which was fun. You know, I encourage everyone to try marimba competitions. I don't think it's my cup of tea personally, but it was really fun to try it anyways. But yes, that was my entire mallet collection of 193 pairs. Yeah. All right, so that was the entire collection, all 193 pairs. Let me know down in the comments below if there's any items like mallets or instruments that you want to receive for Christmas or anything that you're looking to buy in 2020. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and one more thing. Here's a bit of festive cheer.
But yes, if you enjoy my videos, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep off my uploads. I really appreciate it so, so much. Thank you so much for all the support this year. This is not the final episode. There'll be one more episode before the year finishes. In any case, I hope you're having a great day today and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.